Randy is working with the spinach uh, and we're going to put it out for uh, the salad bar that our students have really enjoyed this year and the faculty and staff enjoy it. And back in October we did a big showcase on um, the Farm to School program and October is Farm to School month so we had big signage up and uh, actually uh, Dwayne came out in October and did a really great program at our elementary. Uh, the students were ecstatic and he explained about boards and uh, a variety of other products that he sells to us and to people in the neighborhood. So, um, if I could take a moment, I just we've just been so impressed with the product that comes from veggies from the ledges. The product is clean, the product is bug free, um, it's hole free, and even though we rinse it because uh, that's all we have to do with it, is just give it a good rinse and sometimes we dry it with towels, but it's ready to go. So Wayne does a really super job of providing us with these greens. And so this is an example of the spinach. And this is an example of the elegance green. So a lot of times we'll just mix those. Sometimes we put them separate and sometimes we mix them. It's pretty exciting because it looks like tomorrow we're going to be putting some fresh cut turnips on the salad bar. We'll be putting some fresh cut carrots and a nice head of broccoli. So they love it when we put fresh broccoli on the salad bar. So these are marvelous products to use for our customers. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you. What's been the response from the kids having greens available? You know, it's a learning process. We don't go through as many of the dark greens as we do the romaine. Uh, but I'm kind of hoping as the years go on that students will understand the importance of the bright red leaves, the bright green leaves, and how many more nutrients uh, are in those. And uh, so it's, it's a learning process. It's, but our faculty, especially, is ecstatic. They really love the, the bright and the colored greens and know it's local. Do you say anything to the kids like, um, I guess, the, for example, the value of raw food, how it's still got enzymes in it and stuff like that? Or? Do you know, um, I think that's something we'll be working on a little bit more in the future, um, on site. We, I, I just want you to know, I think the teachers in the classrooms are very aware of our farm to school program. And as they're teaching their nutrition and wellness models in the classrooms, grades K through 12, I know that they are mentioning our program and talking about the advantages. I don't always uh, have time. The kids only have 20 minutes to eat. And sometimes it's, you know, you can put up signs and you can do this and that. You can talk at other times, but it's, we don't always, right at the lunch period, try and do that education process. I think it goes on more in the classroom. But we'll look at that next year uh, as to how we could maybe, at the site, um, talk about the nutritional value of fresh food versus processed food. In the school systems, uh, in fact, we're all learning some of the new standards, and the new standards will be increased fruits, uh, as opposed to increased fruits and vegetables. They're really concerned about the fiber content of what young people are eating and drinking. So they're going to encourage us to be having a cup to a three-quarter cup of a fruit versus a juice. Uh, and the fresh vegetables are going to provide the fiber that we're really lacking in our current menus with all the processed refined white flour in the bread, since we're going to whole grains, half of our grains being whole in our bread products. But our vegetables, um, there's certainly more fiber in a fresh vegetable product as there is in cooked vegetables. Um, and, so, and cooked potatoes especially, that, that, that cooked potato starch goes to sugar immediately in the kids and really has not that much nutritional value. So the Farm to School program is really going to help uh, increase our fiber content, the nutrient content of the vegetables we're serving, and uh, so I'm kind of hoping we'll, we'll see an impact on the health and the lives of our children as they become adults. Hi, 
are you doing? Good, how are you? Salad and soup. Okay, all right. How about these uh, farm greens right here? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, usually I'll put those on top. He puts those on top. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you like best about these dark greens. Um, they have a different flavor yeah, than the regular lettuce. Okay. Did you ever think that they might have more um, nutrients than the lighter lettuce? Um, yeah, they do. I know that. Right. That's better for you. So when you when you're loading up your plate, do you do you think about it more in terms of flavor or nutrition? Uh both. I like both of uh, all the options we have. Uh, plus, it tastes good to me too. So. Look at this. Just tape it, everyone. Approved by the board. All right. To do it. So. Um, that's so what do you gotta, think about uh, just having a salad bar yeah. in the lunchroom? I think this is an awesome alternative to the regular other food. How many days a week do you eat salad? Uh, just whatever I feel like, I guess. <laughs> it's a nice option to have. Mm -hmm. Healthier. <laughs> What's cool about having a salad bar in the lunchroom? It's really healthy. Uh, you can get as much as you want, and do whatever. You guys eat, eat salad every day, or? Just about. It's better than the other lunches. It's true. I've tried it. It's not that bad. So here we have some greens from Veggies from the Ledges. Our farmer friend, Dwayne Moreland, brought these over this morning. We have Swiss chard and spinach, and you can see all the great color in this Swiss chard. And I believe both of these are added to the salad bar for salads on a daily basis, I think, that she serves here. And I know Carla was telling me when she first tried the Swiss chard, what she did was just cut it up and throw it in the mix with the salad mix and the kids didn't even blink an eye. The, the color was great addition but the greens are so mild and sweet that the students accepted them right away and the spinach is the same but both of these are grown in hoop houses so right now it is May. The growing season in Michigan is just getting started and we have these salad greens that are looking amazing coming out of hoop houses and Duane can produce these all winter long so that's a great benefit for farm to school to tap into hoop house growers especially because that can increase the availability of products throughout the season, throughout the year. So Duane has been selling to Carla, I believe, for the last few years, and Carla has been one of our farm to school early adopters of sorts and has done a great job of bringing in more and more different products over the past few years to introduce her kids to more local agricultural products, add a little of that green nutrition that the nutrition requirements are going to Absolutely. ask for in the near future and show the kids what local agriculture is all about. Does Carla advertise and tell the kids that she's buying local and that this, do you think the kids, when it's in the salad bar, have any idea? Well, I know when we were standing on the line with Carla the last time we visited, she was definitely promoting the local product. That's, and then we great. did just send those Michigan asparagus posters to all of the school districts, including Carla here at Olivet, who are going to be purchasing and serving Michigan asparagus this month um, to help them promote Michigan asparagus and let them know where that's coming from. That's great. So some of the challenges for Michigan farmers to participate in farm to school include pricing, 
distribution, even knowing that the schools are interested, knowing that the market is there. And then I think a lot of times they're a little afraid of additional regulations and rules that they're going to have to follow insurance requirements and that bidding process or getting quotes, all of those things sound scary. And a lot of the work does end up falling on the farmer to get some paperwork in line, to get it into the schools for them to understand what their operation is all about. So our job at the state level is to help educate farmers about which schools are interested, help doing some of that matchmaking in the local areas and to help them overcome those challenges or barriers, all of which are able to be overcome with some education, with the right tools, with the right information. Farm to school isn't necessarily the right market for every kind of farmer. It has to mix, fit right in their mix, in their profi farmer profile. Um, but with a larger volume sale, and a guaranteed sale. A lot of farmers are really interested in this type of market and I'd say more and more are willing to sell to schools because they can go to a school, drop off a certain amount of product, know they're going to get paid for that amount of product. Some farmers are even turning to institutional marketing, selling to schools, selling to hospitals and colleges over selling at farmers markets. They may be able to get a better price per bag of Swiss chard or per bag of spinach at a farmer's market, but the time it takes to spend at a farmer's market and the labor hours that go into harvesting, being at the market, cleaning up and packing up, when you don't even know exactly what you're going to sell any given day and then figuring out what you have left over and what you're going to do with what you have left over is a bit of a challenge. So some farmers are replacing some of those market days with institutional sales because they're large volume and they know what they're going to get paid, they know how much they're going to have to harvest, and it works out well for them that way. If it's a larger farm, they may already have their market set, may not be interested in a new, new market like a school that can also be kind of an unknown and a challenge. But a lot of new and beginning farmers are really interested in schools and other institutions as kind of a base market to have that high volume, steady sale, even if the price isn't amazing, it's enough to make it worth it for them. A lot of farmers are really interested in connecting with the community, and one great way to do that is connecting with the school community. So we definitely encourage school food service directors and their staff to really promote where the local food is coming from, and then that can help the farmer with their marketing all around. So if they're at farmer's markets, if they're doing CSAs or farm share programs, um, marketing to a school can help expand all of those other markets as well. It provides kind of some free promotion for the farmers in the local community.